Oh, howdy all, grab yourself a beer, it's time for some part of Excel discussion. Welcome to the very last day of 3.17 spoiler season. Today we're going to be talking about all of the smaller pieces of news. The biggest pieces of news remain the full patch notes that came out this week, and also the Atlas Passive Tree which came out this week, and I'll put a link in the description of the video below to my thoughts on those. In terms of the smaller teasers, these are still significant because there's lots of build around uniques and things like that hidden in there, as well as just some information that might be useful for planning your character out. So firstly, there is Divine Inferno. This is one of the new type of threshold jewel that are very much not just a straight numerical buff to a skill that becomes mandatory. Instead, it's a fundamental transformation of how the skill works. If you're using Infernal Cry, often you're doing so because you want to deal extra damage with hits against a single target, and Divine Inferno is going to ruin that plan. However, in exchange, it's going to make your Infernal Cry exerted attacks do much more damage with Ignite. This is intended to be something that turns Infernal Cry into something useful for one build, into something that's useful for a completely different build. I think this will probably see some experimental use. Whether it's good or not, I can't really say as yet, but it's definitely worth trying. Secondly, we have the Gluttonous Tide. This is a unique bow that has some of the hardest text to parse and very easily misread uh, text on it. Note that the third and fourth lines are the same line. The reason for that is that the word attack here is not attacks. So the first way that I read this was that it said attacks you perform fire that many additional arrows. And then it also had some weird line about lose all frenzy charges on reaching maximum frenzy charges to make the next bow, i.e. to transform this into something else. That's not correct. Thought I'd get that out of the way so that you could have a laugh at my misreading of this item. I even got as far as recording this entire video before I realised how wrong I was. So this item has moderate physical DPS in the low 300s without quality, and we don't know how good the rolls on it are. Maybe it potentially goes into the mid to high 300s with better rolls. However, it has this interesting text where it basically burns all your frenzy charges once you hit maximum frenzy charges, to then cause your next bow attack to fire twice as many arrows. This screams use with barrage to me, and particularly use with barrage and a dead eye. 43% global crit multi while you have at least one frenzy charge, and also 39% chance to gain a frenzy charge for each enemy you hit with a crit. So this means that you are going to be rocketing up frenzy charges, then you're going to be expending all your frenzy charges to make one massive attack that's going to hit twice as many arrows, and that massive attack could be something that could be a barrage that does a lot of extra damage. Next we have a couple of extra Eldritch Implicits, so Hate Cal and Kraken Road. Uh, both of these are items that are fairly well rolled in terms of their normal mod pool rolls. That's the sort of thing you might get from ROG, and then you're going to apply the Eldritch Icors to them. So these are fairly good items down below, but then they get these two extra effects on them. Remember that this precludes the ability to use influence mods on these item slots, and therefore sometimes it's going to be better, sometimes it's going to be worse, but ultimately it is a different crafting option. Hate Cal is picking up Elemental Weakness, Curse Effect, and Increased Effect of Arcane Surge on you. Presumably these are both fairly low tier mods, although we're going to have to find the whole list when it's available, which might not be for a little while. And then we have the Boots, which have some pretty good mods on them. Now unfortunately Boots are in a really difficult position. The influence mod pool for Boots is incredibly strong, and as a result I think it's going to be very hard for Boots like Kraken Road to compete. You've got things like Tailwind on here, you've got things like Projectiles Pierce up to 5 additional targets, You've got things like massive cooldown recovery, elusive on crit, all sorts of all sorts of really powerful mods available on boots as influence mods. And all you're getting here, although 21% chance to avoid ailments is really good, and 23% chance to avoid being stunned is also really good, I'm not sure that that quite makes up for what you're missing out on. However, who knows, maybe the higher tiers of chance to avoid elemental ailments are actually pretty high, and that becomes a lot better. Next we have the Arch Nemesis League Challenge Rewards. This is a divergence from how challenge rewards have been handled in the past. In the past, there's been a reward for 12, for 24, for 36, and then there's been the totem pole as the only other thing. This is changing, and now there are also additional rewards. So you still have the 12, 24, th uh, and 36 major rewards, but there's also additional rewards at 32, 34, and 38 challenges. So no matter how far you get through the 30s, there's always something that feels like it's maybe kind of close to being able to be achieved. The prismatic uh, character effect for 38 looks like it's one of those overpowering and over the top uh, character effects, but it does look cool. Lastly, we have the Siege of the Atlas item filter information, 
which is something that is a treasure trove of very minor pieces of information. This gives the names of all of the new divination cards. Uh, no information on what they give you. However, there is a lot of speculation. And I think the people making this speculation are right that the one that got away is a divination card for Replica Baited Breath. Uh, there's a content creator that we widely suspect has this in the works. And as a result, this could well be the divination card for that meme item. A uh, Replica Baited Breath is purely a meme item, but it is one that a lot of people do tend to want to get their paws on. So that's something that's in this set of div cards. As for everything else, uh, we're not going to find out details on that until the patch goes live, which might actually not be until about an hour before League start. That's when I think the divination cards will get data mined. Next, there's a tiny bit of information that we didn't already have on what all of the different scouting reports are called. Uh, you can possibly infer names for, uh, effects from those, but we're probably going to have to wait until we see them in practice. Then there's one piece of new information that is genuinely new, and that is hidden here in item class misc map item is a little extra thing that we weren't expecting. Maven's Invitation, the Elder Slayers. I think we can probably guess what that's going to be, and that sounds like it could be a pretty crazy fight. I'm assuming that this is just the four of them, but maybe it's all five, and having them all in one arena will be really hectic, especially if, if Veritania keeps some of her abilities to control your movement, and she can be particularly dangerous at funneling you into a specific spot, and then at the same time you've got Baran with a number of ways of really punishing you for staying in one spot. So I have a feeling that the Elder Slayer's invitation could be very, very difficult, but it will be interesting to see how that works in practice. That's all I've got. May your Valobs have interesting results. If you're interested in having a look at the build I'm League starting, then check in the bottom left corner of your screen now and you will see a, a link to it.